All right, welcome to episode 50 of To the Fullest with Jason Frober. Can't believe we made it this far. Thank you so much for everybody who's been supporting me. Uh, you know, make sure you hit that subscribe button, give us a like, ring the bell, check out our social media. Today, I am so excited about our guest, the very talented worldwide session drummer, Mr. Les Warner of the Cult. Is he here? He's, Where is he? Oh my gosh. How are you doing, <laughs> bud? I'm doing great. So glad awesome. to have you on the show, man. I'm just, I'm, it's an honor. I know he's it's really nice to actually leave the house. Yeah. You know I mean, get out of the house and be somewhere else for a change, you know? Well, I hear you got a pretty nice setup going on at the house, man. You know, a badass little studio rig, nice drum thing for uh, doing Zoom uh, lessons. Been Zoom lessons and, and basically session work. Uh, yeah, I, I've been hibernating. It's, been, it's like a hibernation. Um, I phoned up DW Drums and said, hey, all right, I'm setting up a new studio. Give me a great recording drum kit um and then i got a bunch of new cymbals from sabian um and then i just basically uh i got a loan one of those ppp loans at the beginning of the of the uh you know pandemic oh nice and i just got microphones and i just got everything i needed to get up and running i know i'm gonna have to pay it back soon but <laughs> that's okay <laughs> maybe maybe they'll forgive me you know but uh, uh so i'm up and running i got some nice mics and uh, and uh you know i've got a lot of advice from different engineers and i'm basically learning it myself you know yeah you said you were uh running logic right now logic i mean i've been messing around with logic for years but i had to really intensify it and just really get down to nitty gritty with it and uh I got the uh, um, U UAD stuff as well, the uh, interfaces, which are great, F sound very uh, organic sounding. Uh, and I've just been, you know, learning as I go along. Uh, if I get a problem, I just call an engineer, hey, what do I do here and there, you know? And, and I've been messing around with, and I, I got my friend Vinny from Tone Factory to come out and help me uh, awesome. get some sounds. So he came out a couple of times. Um, and uh, I've been sending these drum tracks out, and people have been really digging it, you know? That's awesome, man. And, yeah. and, and the room, you've got to have a good room, you know, with drums. Uh, so I'm lucky enough, my girlfriend's rented this house, and, and I walked into the front room, and I'm like, oh, my God, this, this is perfect for drums. So I'm taking over your front room, I told her. <laughs> and she said, okay. And, uh, and that's it, you know. And uh, it's been great. It's been awesome. I get up in the morning. I don't even get out of my pajamas. I just go straight to the kit, right? That's fantastic. With a nice cup of tea. Uh, and uh, I start working, you know. It's great. Uh, life is good. That's the life right there, man. I mean, I miss crowds. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. I, I've been missing, like, you know, get, jumping on stage and people, like, you know, getting into it and see those happy faces, you know. Uh, but otherwise, you know, the studio's good, too, you know. Yeah, I love the studio life, yeah. man. I've been doing a little of both. Uh, mm. I actually just did a couple different studio sessions, which were a lot of fun to get my hands back in on it. I'm, oh, yeah? I mainly do the live stuff myself. Right, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, you're doing the live stuff, yeah. Yeah, but it's been fun, man. There's a lot of different opportunities popping up with everything starting to open back up. I was, yeah. You know, I was kind of going in one direction before the pandemic, and now uh, there's just all kinds of different different uh, ways to go with everything. Well, one thing I was very excited about is um, I was I was subbing for a Radio in a Rock Vault before the clo the shutdown. Yeah, uh, which was awesome. Uh, playing with some great musicians, Howard Lees and all those guys, and Rowan Robertson was on the show. You know, or doing it and. Uh, so he said, well, do you want to do some writing? And I'm like, it's been years since I've done any writing because I've just been doing live stuff and sessions. So I'm like, you know what? Let's try it out. So I write on bass and he comes over with his guitar. And this is the beginning of the pandemic. And we just, it just, bang, it happened naturally. Um, and then he found this singer in India, of all places. So we, we took social distancing to a whole new level. <laughs> Our singer and bass player in, in India. <laughs> and then me and Rowan at, at my house, and we wrote, we started writing stuff. We would send a singer at the tr basic track. So we ended up with three songs, and it took us months to find a name. We ended up with Custard Pie, um, because it's sort of, we're writing classic rock, really. That's that's our thing, you know. Yeah. Um, it sounds like a mix between Aerosmith, Bad Company, Zeppelin. It's got that old feel, you know, about it. Um, and um, the singer is 
the singer that Rowan found is unbelievable. He uh, he's like Ian Gillen, uh, you know, just White Snake. I mean, he's so talented. This guy. Um, we we're very lucky. I mean, it was a studio project. I mean, it's un unlikely that we we're actually going to be going out and doing any gigs or whatever, but we just did it anyway. And it's like we have something that came out of the pandemic, you know? Yeah, man, that's awesome. I see you got your uh, website, officialcustardpieband.com. Right, yeah. So we released the song um, Fall in Love. It was our first one. Okay. Uh, we did a video for it in the desert. It's funny, actually. <laughs> so me and Rowan go out to the desert and do the video on our side. And then the singer goes to his desert out there in India, <laughs> right? His desert's a little bit more gloomy and more cloudy, and our one's no, no clouds at all. But we, all, we matched it up, and, you know, it worked. It worked pretty good, you know? That's awesome. So we did that. Fall in Love was the first one. Then the second one is, uh, what was the song? Um, it was, uh, here we go. You got it? Lone Wolf, right? Lone, Lone Wolf. Wolf and Eye of the Storm. Eye of the Storm is our, is our favorite. It's it's, your, that's your favorite one? It's our, it's, I'll play a little bit of it. I got right here. Yeah, I think so. I mean, they all got their own sound, you know? Oh, a little bit of an intro on this bad dude. Oh, yeah. storm but every song that's is awesome every song's got its own identity the 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 same type of music but it's like you know it's interesting the way it happened it's you know like a lone wolf has got a sort of aerosmith bad company vibe about it you know oh, really? what i mean yeah uh they there's all all of them are different you know which is great i think because you know you don't want to sort of do an album that's all every track is like the same type of thing you know it's it's, it's just different um, we're working on an instrumental right now called um, Del Boy. It's, it's after my dog. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's got mandolin on it. It's got some really interesting aspects to it, you know. I mean, we just chilled out and had fun. You know what I mean? There was no pressure. It was like, well, we, you know, we're just chilling, waiting for this pandemic to end, you know. So you know that's all you can do, man. That's what got me started doing this uh, whole shebang right. here, man. Yeah. It's just like, what else am I going to do? I'm stuck in my house. But it's fun. I mean, it's you know, communicate. We're communicating. You know, either through music or or talking or whatever. You know. Yeah, man. You know, it's yeah. it's a beautiful thing that we can have the opportunity to do these kind of things. And the funny thing about um, I have the storm. The singer he sent us a message saying, "I'm having real trouble coming up with lyrics." You know, uh, I just can't think of anything. So um, I said to Rowan, "Rowan, come over. Just come over." We, we grabbed a couple of like these witching books. These books, like my girlfriend had, you know, uh, Anne Rice and all that. And we sat there and we just went through line by line. Oh, that's a good line. Oh, the, yeah, I have this or that. And literally me and Rowan put the whole lyrics together. Oh, really? Yeah. And I've never done that before ever, you know. So we were really proud of it, you know. And then we sent it to the singer and he, he sang it. That's fantastic, You know, man. if he didn't want to do it, all right, we'll do it. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, which I've never done before. So it was cool, you know. That's so too cool. We feel like we've got we, we've got something to show for the pandemic. Yeah, you know what I mean. Something came out of it that was positive, and we just put it out there, and we're getting likes all the time. It's like picking up. Rowan called me a couple of days ago, said we got an, another thousand people that like it. I'm like, great. It's just put it out there and see what happens. You know. 
That's amazing. And Rowan Robertson, of course, from Dio. Yeah. As well as other bands like Bang Tango and DC4. And we're both English. We come. You know, we grew up in London, more England, around the same period, you know, the 70s and 80s. And, uh, you know, we remember all the same TV shows and we got the same sense of humor. Uh, we, and we got the same influences. You know what I mean? So it works really great. That's awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's, uh, and you're, like you're saying, you know, coming out of the pandemic with something to show for yeah. it. I know whenever I was yeah. like, when we were trapped in my house forever, I always said, if I had time to do stuff, I would get all these things done. Right. And it's like, now there's no excuses. Right. You, you know, there's yeah. nothing holding you back. You know, you got to start working on these projects and, and actually making sh shit happen. Put your money where your mouth is yeah. kind of thing. Uh, and I tell you, it was, it was great. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, we've moved on now, sort of, because I'm doing other stuff. I just auditioned for a pretty sizable band, and Rowan's like, you know, doing an album. He's doing some great stuff right now. Um, I think he's work. He's working with Paul Shortino. Yeah, uh, on an album. They're uh, doing a King Cobra album. King Cobra, yeah. We actually, we just had Rowan on the oh, show. Oh, you did. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay, there you go. Yeah. So I'll put a link uh, as well yeah. on the writer about now. It'll pop up in the uh, corner. And uh, it'll say, check out the video from Rowan Robertson. Yeah, and, and actually, we, we've just got a video done for um, Eye of the Storm. Oh, really? Yeah, we, we, a friend, uh, this guy, this kid I was teaching, his father, um, I mentioned to him about a video guy, and he said, I, I got a video guy, uh, this guy Chong uh, in California, and he said, yeah, he'll knock something together for you. So we told him the concept, look, we don't want the band in it, it just wants to be, you know, just follow the lyrics and go with it it's sort of eye of the storm end of the world type deal you know so he went with it and uh, we got a video coming out in the next couple of weeks and it's pretty dark it's pretty crazy um oh yeah it's like wow i watched it the other night i'm like oh my god you know it's apocalyptic you know what i mean it's like end of the world uh, and it suits the song it's great that's it's, awesome. It's a very dark subject, <laughs> but I look forward to seeing it, man. Yeah, it I really make sure like, it's like linked into the video description and everything. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, it's like wow, he did a great job. It was perfect for the for the song. You know, so we're happy about that. Yeah, music videos are fun, man. I've been getting my hands uh, a little bit dirty trying to make some music videos a little bit more professionally, and right. I mean, I'm I'm getting into it, man. You I know really what? dig it. We've got the tools now. I yeah. mean, that's why I got my uh, iPhone 12. You know, with three cameras, four cameras on it. Dude, those cameras are incredible, aren't They're they? They're amazing. So really, I mean, I'm going to be doing a video with my daughter because we're releasing a song coming up. Um, we, we did a remake of uh, If God Was One of Us. Oh, cool. You remember that song back in the 90s? Joan Osborne? Yeah. So I did a pretty elaborate arrangement of that song much more emotional and it starts off with cellos and piano and it's really you know slow um and then it does like a, a intro verse chorus and then a the whole band comes in okay so it's a pretty long version and then the band comes in and after the solo it's a breakdown and then i got a 50 piece choir <laughs> i didn't actually get a 50 piece choir but my daughter's singing teacher told her students every time they come in, they got to sing, the you know the part. Oh, nice! So we ended up with like fifty-two voices on oh, on the track. <laughs> it's a makeshift uh, choir, you know. So yeah, that's got to sound huge. Yeah, it sounds great. We're actually uh, we're redoing a vocal this weekend coming up. Um, my daughter and and then it's going to be getting ready to mix, and then we're going to do a video. So what we're thinking of doing is getting all this, her students to go out to the desert, social distancing, and, and just like have a, um, you know, one of those uh, drones to go over them standing out there singing the song. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we've got some ideas for it. So um, we're going to get Chong to do the video again, uh, and it should be pretty cool. And, you know, it's taken a long time to do this song. We've been working on it for about a year because uh, it's my daughter's first release and uh, I'm her dad and I want to make sure it's great. I don't want to, you know, so I've been self-indulgent with it. Yeah. Um, but it's going to sound amazing when it's done and she's a great singer. Uh, it'll be our first release. Um, so I want it to be epic, you know. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and it, what it was... Really, initially, it was a thank you to the uh, first responders, 
you know, if God was one of us. Yeah. There's a sort of a different meaning, you know, sort of like they are. They, they, they are the gods among us because they're doing the work of angels, you know. So it's basically, that's what it is. It's a thank you to them. That's fantastic, man. Uh, and uh, my daughter's first release. So, uh, you know, our fingers are crossed. It works out good. You guys going to keep moving and doing like you got an out, like a three-song thing set up or an album concept? Uh, we will be working on it. She's sort of doing covers right now. She's okay. trying to find herself. That's a, that's a good way to do it, man, she's, doing covers. Yeah, she's she's a very into the Adele type thing, ballads. Okay. You know, and she literally just left that school. The, you know that the art school downtown here, uh, the art, special art school. Okay. No, I I don't actually. Do you know the name of it? Oh, it's uh, damn it, you. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm so bad with names. Um, uh, it's it's downtown Vegas. It's a big art school. Uh, is it just called the Art Institute? It's something. Yeah. It's yeah. I think it is. Um, I, think I, I, I can't just can't about. think of it right now. But uh. She did, yeah, it's the Art Institute. There you go. Las she did. Vegas, yeah. She did uh, choir there, um, and um, she, you know she she learned a lot of good stuff. She's got a very in, interesting voice. Uh, her style is very very moody and very. It's just it's really cool. So um, I'm gonna work with her on writing some more stuff and doing some covers and and just see where she goes. Find her niche. You know? Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. That's the only way to do it, man. It, you know, it you is. You just play a bunch of other people's songs and kind of get comfortable. Yeah. Is she starting a band or anything? Is she just doing a solo really. artist? It's, it's more solo stuff. Yeah. But we're going to do a video with Chong uh, and when we've released, when we've mixed this song. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're pretty excited about it. That's fantastic, yeah. man. What a, what a uh, privilege to get to do that with your daughter, man. It, it is awesome. Even though it's very difficult working with your daughter <laughs> or your son or any of your kids, because yeah. it's daddy, you know. Am I going to listen to you, daddy? You know, it's, you know what I mean. And they yeah. all know it. They know everything at that age. So it, we have issues here and there, but we're we're getting through it. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be great. That's fantastic, man. You definitely have to share that with me whenever oh, it's yeah. released, and I'll definitely send it through my my social media and everything. Absolutely, I definitely is going to do that. That's fun. That's awesome, man. What a cool thing to be doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, she's camping this week. It's like uh, she's gone out camping with her friends. Oh, where's she going camping? And uh, I love doing that stuff. Utah somewhere. Oh, that Utah's the best, man. Yeah. Like it's just a different world out there. The greens are are more vibrant yeah. in Utah, and the rocks are just so freaking bright red everywhere. So when she gets back, she's going to be doing that vocal. We're going to spend like two days on the, on redoing the vocal. I have a I have an engineer coming in from New New York. Oh, cool. Uh, who's a good? He's really good at hip hop and uh, you know that type of stuff. He's going to produce a vocal. That's awesome. Where are you doing the uh, the vocal at? Are you guys going to the oh, studio or are you doing it at the house? No, I do it at my place. Yeah. I, I have a really nice Neumann mic. Oh, do you? The uh, U87? Yeah, I got no, a U87. I got. I got. I was very lucky. I got it really, really a great price. Yeah. Yeah. I, at the beginning of the pandemic, and that's our main vocal mic. Of course, that is that, that's it, like the vocal mic. It's beautiful. It sounds so amazing. Yeah. So, that's so cool. Do you got a solid preamplifier and like outboard compressor you're running um, through? I've got that. Um, and I've been getting some decent sounds, um, uh, but my again, this engineer's coming in from New York, so he's going to be tweaking my studio. Cool. And he's going to be tweaking the vocal sound and everything, so I should be in really good shape by the time he leaves. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's exciting as well, because, you know, the drum sound, is, you know, it's got to be spot on. And I'm getting some great sound. I mean, you heard it, right? Yeah, those drums sound fantastic. If that's you're doing it. Put, 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 put a little bit of Lone Wolf, and you really hear yeah, the drums let me on play that. Yeah, some Lone Wolf, man. Uh, yeah, this is that. It's like Bad Company and, and Aerosmithy, you know.
Yeah, you can hear that room, right? Yeah, that room's great, it's man. Really You're is. showing you like the vaulted ceilings and everything, yeah. and yeah. I think I found a picture. It's not the best one of it on uh, on on the Book of Face here. With that, <laughs> yeah, you got that big thing, and there's your puppy too. There's my boy. There's my boy. Yeah, that dog's adorable. He's getting real famous as well because my my girlfriend's been putting him up, and he's been talking all the way really. all the way through the da- pandemic. He's been like, you know, talking about life and everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, one of those apps that you know can, the dog talks. Oh, that's so. Funny. Uh, he, yeah, he got a few awards and stuff for that. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, he did. He's more famous than me. <laughs> oh god, that's the age we live in, right? Uh, you gotta totally. give your dog an Instagram. I it know. Becomes better, bigger than yours. Or whatever it is, you know. Oh, the TikTok. I'm supposed to be getting on TikTok for some reason. Everyone's like, "That's the next big thing." And I know. I heard so about it. I guess I'm just too freaking old now, man. It just happened. All I know. Of a me sudden. too. I'm my super god, not I mean, interested. I got to get lessons from my kids. You know what, yeah. what's cool to do on that. You know. Oh, it's uh, I don't even know. Everything I see about TikTok is just ridiculous. I don't yeah, know what, what the I'm... more ridiculous, the better, I think. Right? It's, yeah. I know. I haven't even seen it, really. I haven't even studied it or anything yet. I got to check it out. Yeah, me too. I never really. I just, I just, you know, I I've seen other people show me it on their phones. Some people tell me they're like, uh, they spend hours on that uh app on their phone just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling kind of like it's the ultimate uh junk food for your brain i mean yeah you know what i mean i look i i'm 60 i grew up during the 70s i you know i was there when there was no phones nothing it's just bizarre the whole thing you know what i mean uh people you know kids and they just spend hours glued to their phone isn't it crazy? It's just bizarre. Yeah, they, what, what did we do? You know, we put them in their hands when they were babies. Well, I mean, no, I mean, what did we do back in the seventies and that when there were, we didn't have any of that? It, ex- it we existed. Well, I mean, I wasn't alive in the seventies. I was alive in the eighties when we were just riding our bikes and and playing basketball and you know. Like, I was playing with Peter Green back in the seventies. Yeah. You know, I was around when punk came out. I was active. You know what I mean? Doing punk rock. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't feel sixty. I feel like thirty. But you know. God damn, yeah. I didn't know you were 60, bro. You look I don't fantastic. Feel it. I don't feel it at you all. You don't look it, man. I, I honestly, well, my body sometimes feels it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? But, you know, when I do a, a hard set on stage. Ah, you look great, man. You look fantastic. Thanks, man. Yeah, I think it's, it's how old you feel, you know. I think that's the important thing. And I think musicians, you know, I, I don't think they age, you know, because you, 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 we're doing what we love. Yeah. We're doing, we're still doing playing. <laughs> we're like playing games we're just or hobbies or whatever it is it's just it's just you know if you still do what you're doing when you're 14 15 it, you do you don't age i don't think yeah no and it's it's in the heart too you know you, yeah you, it's, it's how old you feel i i, I absolutely you know and uh, again it's, your body feels pretty rough sometimes but uh and the hangovers are, they go on longer <laughs> <laughs> they definitely go on longer uh, but uh, other than that you know it's it's uh it's great and what are you doing for your health you doing any special diets you well, doing exercise regimen and stuff like that or? i i need to get back on it i was actually getting into this juicing thing yeah and it was phenomenal actually i i, I did 11 days juicing uh, literally, uh, I got a juicer and I put all kale and and just vegetables in it, and and uh, it was amazing. All my aches and pains went. Yeah, I felt really sharp, my brain, um, and I think I'm gonna get, do that again. I think I'm gonna get back on that um, and try and do like a 30 day thing. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Uh, and then I got a trainer. I just got a trainer over at the, uh, the gym. It's gonna be training me too. Um, because uh, you know, I, I I should be going out and doing stuff on the road soon. So you really got to be ready for that. Yeah, to play drums every night and existing yeah. out on the road, it's it's rough on your body. I mean, even even if it's a ninety minute show, you got to give it everything, you know. Oh yeah, and playing drums that'll take it Plus out. Plus singing, I'm doing backing vocals too, <laughs> and that is is hard. You're doing these really high harmonies and stuff, and playing. Yeah, it'll t- you you'll feel it. I'll tell you. Oh, dude, yeah, you're you not know? lying, man. That's one of my favorites. I like to do uh, Kiss Alive and jam that and sing, oh, yeah? on, you know, and I'll get a, <laughs> I'll just jam in my headphones and sing along, you know, but uh, right, right. It, it takes it out. It's a workout, man. I've been playing bass, actually. I've been I've been doing bass as well. Um, yeah, you do the Tom Petty thing, 
right? Well, I was doing that. It was a funny story, actually, because the drummer uh, was the guy who played with Marilyn. He played bass with Marilyn Manson. Oh, good. right, really? Uh, yeah, and he's a really accomplished guitar player and bass player, but he was playing drums. And then, of course, you know my history. I, you know, I played with a cult and all uh, on drums, and I'm playing bass. <laughs> and I booked a festival one day uh, for. I was with this Irish band with a brass section, a big, big thing, and I, I booked the Tom Petty band on it. And they came early. You know, I was playing on stage, playing uh, drums on stage with this big, big band, and they heard me play drums, and they're like, "What are we doing?" <laughs> what are we doing? Les should be playing drums with us, and Andy should be playing bass. Uh, so we swapped. <laughs> oh, did you did you actually swap? We ended up Tom we ended up swapped. So I'm actually playing drums with him now. Oh man, that's yeah. funny. Yeah, I thought it was. I, I was like, good for I you was. going up playing bass. You know, it's about having a good time. I loved it. But uh, I was like, you know, okay, all right. Uh, but I have been playing with the. Um, uh, Kid Cocky. I've been playing bass with the uh, Kid Rock tribute. That's a fun band. And that man. is real fun because, yeah. uh, you know, Kid Rock, he, he's got country, southern rock, hip hop, heavy. He's got every type of music within his music. So that was awesome. You know, amazing. So I, I, I've been doing that. I've been playing that. And uh, that's been fun as hell. Yeah, and Chris, he puts on a hell of a Kid oh, Rock yeah. show, man. Like, that changed my opinion about oh, yeah. Kid Rock in general. Yeah, watching the tribute act, I was like, this is this is actually pretty fun, man, what I'm, they're doing. And learning that stuff. I mean, there's some great riffs. It's, like, fantastic. And I just got hold of an old Rickenbacker uh, about a month oh, cool. ago. I got, like, a 73 uh, 4001 Ricky, um, which was amazing. I couldn't believe my luck. Uh, I got hold of one. This guy actually gave it to me, uh, and it was in his closet for thirty years. What? It was a mess. Uh, and he said, "Look, I want to give it to someone who's going to appreciate it and fix it up." So he gave it to me. I couldn't believe it. I spent about a grand on it, and it's perfect now. So I've been using the Ricky for that. That's cool. And it's awesome. You know, those old Rickies are fantastic. Oh yeah, man. You know, I don't like and the new ones. They look amazing too. Oh, they look great. But the new ones, I don't like. I don't like the new ones. The neck is all jacked up. But uh, there's the old one. It's '73. We looked it up. So I was very lucky. I'm very grateful about that. So I've been using that with the Kid Cocky band, and uh, and it sounds awesome. The growls, it's just like a really nasty growl, you know. Uh, I love an old Rickenbacker, oh. man. That shit is wicked cool. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I uh, I like the thin neck on the bass, man. Yeah, yeah me too. It's, it makes it easier to play, easier to grab. It feels a lot more comfortable. Some well, of those bases get real th Yeah, oh, look, yeah. Look, look at those. The sausage fingers. <laughs> 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 so I need a small neck. I really do. Yeah, I got these monsters. Oh, my God. Hands, look at those. Well, you, don't you do that... Um, don't you play bass on the uh, that was the, that the uh, Primus band? Primus, yeah. oh my god! I do the blue collar bass. Wow, I that, need to start doing that again. Oh my god! I mean, that's hard. That's really difficult. I don't know how you do that. It's fun, man. I, I, I said it's a total challenge to go up there and do it, and that's why I do it. You know, yeah. I think that's that's why all of us do it. Is we it's it's fun to go up there and see what we're made of. Well, that's the thing. I mean, when I, I got into playing bass because uh, a band this manager called me up and. Uh, Said, uh, yeah, are you too? I did a U2 uh, band uh, with these guys. Um, and I thought, you know, say, yeah, we need a bass player. I'm like, well, maybe I should do it. And I did it and I had so much fun with it. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. So I, and it was a challenge. It was a challenge. Never gone up on stage and played bass. Yeah. I've always been behind the kit. You know what I mean? And uh, <laughs> the funny, I, I tell this story, uh, um, Tony Franklin, you know, the bass player from uh, The Firm, okay. played with Whitesnake, and uh, played with so many people. We were doing an award ceremony one night, and I'm, I'm sitting behind the drum kit, and he's standing right beside me, and he basically dropped wind <laughs> right next to me. And, I'm like, really? uh... and he looks at me with this big grin on his face. I mean, really, Tony, Really? I can't go anywhere. I'm stuck here. So uh, I said, so I'm like, that's another reason I play bass. So I can move around. <laughs> I, I, can, <laughs> I can get away from it. But, uh, uh, but that's uh, hilarious. I love it. You know, it's good to do different things. Challenge. You've got to have challenges. 
Yeah, I gotta always watch what I eat. Uh, being stuck in front of house the whole night for the show, I've uh, more That's than right. more than once I've uh, destroyed the front of house, and I have to sit in my own ruin. Oh my just god! <laughs> <laughs> can't leave the board. You're like, why the fuck did I eat uh, that, man? Oh yeah, I bet. <laughs> oh, oh my god! Yeah, oh. it's a mess when you're stuck there, man. That's just for sure. But he, he looked at me with a big grin on his face, and I'm like, oh. Of course. You it's swine. fun to torture your bandmates, What man. a swine, you know? <laughs> That's, we were always screwing with each other in the Cracker Man band. We were smashing oh, yeah. bases up and, uh, yeah. and just trying to play pranks on each other the right. whole time and fucking pants each other. And, and uh, one of my favorite ones, I ended up uh, lighting a bunch of firecrackers. Tyler was trying to do some somber moment. And get serious for a second, and, and we're like, we're not having any of that. <laughs> I had these black cats hiding in my my bag. I didn't tell anybody, and I just lit them up under his fucking feet. Oh no! Yeah, it was great. You know, it can backfire. Some of those things can, those jokes can backfire. Oh yeah. Uh, I worked with Raven, the bass player from Killing Joke. We we had a band back uh, before I left London, uh, the uh, late eighties. And the Killing Joke used to have all these stories about the uh, pranks and stuff. And one night they were in a hotel somewhere and they grabbed Raven out of bed, no clothes on, put some handcuffs on him, put him out in the uh, hallway and they, and they handcuffed him to a radiator. What? A radiator. That's fucked up. And they didn't realize that the, the, the heat of the radiator was going to go through the metal of the... Of the uh, <sighs> And he, he was like screaming, like, this is getting hot. <laughs> so that was pretty gnarly, you know what I mean? So some of those, they can backfire, some of those uh, pranks, you know? Oh, gosh, I hope they got him out there. <laughs> yeah, they got him, but he was, he was pretty good. burnt up. He was pretty burnt up. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy, right? Oh, my gosh, yeah, that would suck. <laughs> you imagine? That would be terrible. Freaking, uh, yeah, band pranks are fun, but, yeah, they do go too far yeah. sometimes, man. They you do. gotta watch it. Oh, we were always trying to fuck with each other in that uh, in that Cracker Man band oh, and team up against each other and just see what we could pull off. But <laughs> shit I gets bet. crazy. Shit gets crazy. No, no, no. But yeah, I'd like to hear you do that again. That'd be awesome. That, that, um... Yeah, I've gotten a bunch of requests about that, mm. man. Everybody's always hitting me up to do it. It was it was a lot of fun. I really like yeah. doing it, and uh, yeah. I spent a ton of money on like costumes and, oh, yeah? and pedals, the whole and thing. The whole thing. I got the same amp as the guy, and a God, bunch of the same damn. pedals, and like I was really trying to find his tone. His tone is yeah. so fantastic. Oh, I know. I saw him uh, open up for you two once in New oh, really? Jersey back in the day. As uh, Primus or Primus. as one of his other bands? Primus. Primus? Yeah. Uh, they were bizarre. It was like the first time oh, I yeah. heard them, and it was like, wow, what is this? This is crazy. Oh, yeah. It was like it was like seeing Devo when they started. It's like, <laughs> whoa, what the hell is this? You know? Yeah. The, the second I found Primus, I was, yeah. I was just immediately in love with it. It's well, just such a crazy concept, and it just goes all over the place. I know. They don't stick to the 4-4, four, four, which I love. You no, know, no, they do no. They do songs in like 7-11 time signatures yeah. and crazy breakdowns. And they, you literally, there's certain songs like um, Herald of the Rocks is one of my favorite ones to play. What? Because if the whole band doesn't have every note and every beat of that song memorized, it's like a fucking train wreck. Oh, because yeah. Because it just stops yeah. on a dime picks back up out of nowhere there's no count in it's like based on vocal signatures and like and so it can just completely bomb or you can get through it and you're like yeah. we just did that like how did we get through that right yeah. now it's fascinating when you get a band like that to play you know it's like a magical thing it's, it's just magical oh yeah you know one of my favorite bands was Little Feet back in the day and I loved that band and they were just like a they moved like a snake yeah. You know, that, that thing was just so amazing. It was so tuned in together. You know, it's a wonderful thing when yeah. that happens. Yeah, I love watching Les do his thing. I, I, I'm especially a big fan of um, the new Clinton, uh, Les Claypool, John Lennon band, the Claypool Lennon Delirium. Oh, yeah? And, uh, yeah, because it's, uh, or not John Lennon, but um, his son. Sean. Sean Lennon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, and they just grew, really? man. It is so fantastic to watch. I have got to check that out. Yeah, it's really good, man. Damn. Yeah, they, uh, they can just 
they just ride this freaking wave and wow. what, yeah, what let is, everybody take turns. What is Sean doing? What's he playing? He's playing guitar and singing. Okay. And uh, yeah, yeah, he looks fantastic. Let me look up a picture nice. of him real quick. It's it's pretty cool. He's always covered in glitter. Pretty. And uh, his guitar is all covered in glitter. Yeah. It's real psychedelic, man. Really? Um, yeah, he, they're a fucking trip. Well, you know, I work with Julian, right? I did his first demos back in, uh, that was my first session I did in London. With Julian Lennon? Yeah. Really? Yeah, and he sounded just like his dad. It was crazy. And uh, we recorded two songs from the Double Fantasy record, you know, and uh, it was surrealistic, you know, work playing with him. I mean, he looked just like him, sounded like him. It was crazy, you know. And we stayed friends. You know. Yeah, there's oh, there one. He's he's dressed up all interesting. Wow. He kind of always has his hat and stuff on. I'm trying to find a That's shot. Awesome. Of, shot of him doing the uh, the glitter thing that he does. But right. Huh. Yeah, it's really fun, man. It's uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's just uh, it's. I'd love to play some of it, but I'm sure I'll get in trouble for playing some some, <laughs> some of it on the podcast. But uh, yeah, oh, here's a glitter shot. So yeah, it's 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 music to go take psychedelics to and uh, right. and uh, and have a good time, man, for sure. Oh, there you go. So I, yeah. I gotta I gotta check it out. Yeah, it's it's fucking who's, great. Who's playing drums on it? Ah, uh, fuck. Who is playing drums on it? I don't know. I do not know. Hmm. Um, I can find out though. I got the computer. Yeah. Google it. I will. Let me see here. I got their website pulled up here. Bio. Go like this. Wink. Damn. Lesson so, Sean. Right. Um, I gotta check that out later. Yeah, it's a, it's one of my favorites. Wow. I uh. I don't know where it says the lineup at. Interesting combo. They yeah, they're doing a second album, or they did a second album already, which is kind of rare for, for less to do that kind of thing. Oh, yeah? He usually does like one album and he right. gets the fuck out of there and starts another project. <laughs> he writes so much music, man. Yeah. His next thing he's gonna be doing is uh, is uh, a tribute to Rush. Oh, really? Yeah, they're doing a whole Rush tribute. Oh, um, interesting. They they were they were supposed to be doing the tour on uh uh right before the pandemic happened, but you know, now it's uh Huh. Oh, Paulo Baldi. There it is. Yeah, I, I found it. I don't know who that is. I don't either. I got his Facebook page. Paulo Baldi. Hmm. This man here. Wow, he must be good. He's really good. Like yeah. I, I mean, he I didn't know who amazing. he was, but uh, his fucking drums are incredible in that right. band. I'm gonna check it out later. Definitely, I want to hear it. Yeah, I should do some of his. Uh, I, I want to do a song or two whenever I start doing the. Yeah. Primus banding and the Blue Collar Bastards again. No, you got to do that. You got to do that. And it'll be fun. Yeah. So I got a, a gig coming up. A couple of gigs coming up uh, with the Petty Band. We're playing uh, with Count 77's band. Oh, that'll be good. Yeah, I think it's September. We, we've got a show coming up uh, at the M. Oh, okay. And uh, I think uh, Christy Chaos's band, a solo band, I mean, the original band are playing, and then we're playing. So it's, it's a bit of an event. I think it's going to be pretty cool. That's a big deal. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I think it's a charity thing as well. But uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, well, let's see what happens. I mean, if anything closes down again, damn it, touch wood. Hope it doesn't. Yeah, I know it's getting freaky, man. With all the the they're, yeah. they're hinting at the lockdowns again, and the I masks know. coming back on, and the vaccines aren't working, and yeah, it's, it's just really crazy, unbelievable. It's just you know, it's crazy. It's just, it's just you don't know what's going to happen. The government don't know what to do. You know. Yeah, it's it's Ugh. definitely destroying the the entertainment industry, man. Like it's just getting think, back uh, on its feet, and they're gonna cut its legs out from under yeah, it the, again. I know the Foo Fighters just canceled gigs. Yeah, they did a. Yeah, it's kind of funny. For, I mean, I think it's funny, but uh, they uh, they said you can't show up to their concert unless you're vaccinated. Right, that's right. And so, and then apparently they all got COVID. 
anyways. They, they did? Yeah. Oh, no. They're like, you know, it's just like, <sighs> the fuck are you supposed to do, man? You know, none wow. of this shit's working. Wow. And, I mean, uh, the thing about it, I mean, my, you, know, you know Zach Frone, right? Yeah. And Zach Frone just came off the road with Corey Taylor. Uh, and he was very careful when he when he was on the road. He was and playing then, with Corey Taylor. Oh yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Good for him. Oh, I know he's doing great, which he deserves. He's awesome. He's so talented. Oh, I know he's amazing. We worked with uh, Bow Wow Wow together. I got him a gig with Bow Wow Wow. Oh, that's cool. And right. he he nailed it. It yeah. was and that stuff is really unusual <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. Um, it was a struggle for me. I mean, because that's totally against my whole style of playing. <laughs> but I, I nailed it, which was awesome. Again, there's another challenge, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then I brought Zach in and he was, he totally nailed it. Um, uh, anyway, so he came off the road with uh, Corey he, and he, he had the, uh, the vaccine before he went out. Uh, then he got COVID, but it was like a flu. It was it wasn't a big deal. If he hadn't had the vaccine, he probably would have been a lot worse, you know. So yeah. apparently, if you've got the vaccine and you do get COVID, it ain't as bad as it could be. So yeah. that's one good thing about it, I suppose, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, I ended up getting it in November oh, way did? back then. Yeah, we yeah. had to do a trip to Arkansas, and mm. everybody fucking got it when we were in Arkansas. And uh, oh wow! And yeah, it wasn't it wasn't that bad for me or for right. Angela. We was just a, it was like a mild flu. You were lucky then. Yeah. Did you have the vaccine then before that? Or not? No. So you were very lucky then. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it just it hits everyone differently. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, you, you never know. It's a crapshoot, you know. Yeah. You yeah. Know I mean? It's killed a few people that I know, and that's a fucking terrible thing, man. I know. You know it, it really it's just is. out of nowhere. And then other people, other you people don't expect. it doesn't really hurt. Some people you don't expect. Yeah. You know, that, that it would affect them, you know? I know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fucked up, man. But well, touch wood, hopefully, hopefully it's all going to be getting better soon. I, hopefully they come up with a plan to uh, fix this, you know? Yeah. I just... Uh, Hopefully they stop destroying the economy in the process, you know? Yeah. It seems like the uh, the solution is worse than the problem these days. Yeah, and a lot of people, don't they don't want to go back to work. It's really weird. It's like... Well, of course not. The government's giving them a bunch of money. But, and, but it runs out in September, apparently. Yeah, but they're going to push it to the burger. Everyone's going to do that. Yeah, I suppose they are. Yeah. I dropped <laughs> it right when June, uh, June hit and everything opened up, and I started mixing shows, and I dropped yeah. it all and started, you know, working again. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm just I'm ha I'm I'm happy to have my f job back. Like right. I I I need to make money to survive. We all do. Sure. And, and it's uh, I just don't want them to shut it all down again, man. Oh man, it'd be it'll be awful. It'll yeah. be really like unbelievable, you know. But again, hopefully, it's be positive about it, and you know, hopefully it won't. Yeah, things are starting to move. I mean, over yeah. at Area 15, it's banging. Oh, We've yeah. We've doing that you know, Rockstar Bar. It's coming together. Oh, that, I played there. I, we did the uh, Kid Cocky gig there. Yeah, I saw it on the console yeah. you guys were there. And we did really well, too. We did great. A lot of people came out for that. So yeah. I think we're going to be on a rotation there. That'd be awesome. Hopefully yeah, I, I get to so. work with you. Yeah, I got uh, what, I got Peter Dallas's band coming and doing a Journey thing soon. Yeah. And, yeah, it's it's fun, man. Are you you're working there? Yeah, yeah. I, I picked up a, sp oh, a slot there doing did, some sound. When did you do that? Start there? Uh, a few months ago, like in June. Oh. I started. I'm the I'm the I'm the secondary oh, guy. Oh, the second over there. guy. Okay. Yeah. We had the yeah, we had the one guy there. Yeah, my buddy Paul's been doing the sound yeah. over there mainly. There you go. We he's had him cool. on the podcast as well, uh, talking about all kinds of interesting stuff. Yeah. And uh yeah, he's been hand, he heading that up and then I've been yeah. backing him up on it and nice. you know, working in tandem. I've been doing the Area fifteen thing as well. How that it's fantastic really i haven't been there Did, yeah. uh, didn't i have an art show there or something a big art show yeah it just got extended you know i need to go over there and check it out yeah you, know? you do man i really do I, I i haven't been there yet and I, all this stuff is going on and i don't even know anything about it yeah dude go on a monday it's uh, yeah. if, if you go on a monday i think like locals get discounts really? and stuff like that for the yeah. art show for oh, i think all the tickets or most <sighs> of the tickets because it's free to get in and then it's mm. like uh, right. all these different things you can do on the side and it's just like it's a psychedelic paradise, man. I, they do I really, big raves on the weekend. And, I need to go. I need to go and check that out. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. Uh, it's pretty fun, so man. So Lollapalooza's happening, isn't it? Like next week? Lollapalooza's happening yeah. next week? Yeah. Or well, whenever it is, it's coming up. Really? But I think they they all, they all they need to be vaccinated, I think. I'm not sure. Or well, I know that everyone has to wear masks. I know that. Yeah. But they're, they're doing it, yeah. 
Really? Is that oh, happening? yeah. July 29th. I can't believe it. Holy guacamole. Yeah, they're mm. doing July 29th through August 1st. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Health and safety details. Boy. Lollapalooza. That's crazy. That's huge, isn't it? It's like, where is that? Uh, oh, yeah. Vaccine card, vaccine record, or negative COVID test to get in. Right. Uh, it's in Chicago. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eesh, Chicago. This is a dangerous place to be these days. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, New York ain't all that safe either. No, none of those major democratic cities are doing very well, yeah. man. They're well, been, they're all falling been, apart at the seams. It's because of the go. F- uh, it's because of like, the, you know, the defund the police thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the police don't really want. Don't feel very uh, appreciated right now. They should. You know, that's <laughs> that's the truth, man. You, you can't know? just. Uh, you can't just release all your uh, protective agencies you know it's just yeah. it's a ridiculous concept uh, totally totally <laughs> but yeah that's they're seeing the outfall the fallout of it freaking uh you know people are leaving those cities in droves man yeah chicago is so violent right now I mean, it's just fucking yeah. out of control in chicago yeah Did you hear what they're doing in oregon no half of oregon's like leaving oregon they're yeah. like and are uh, there uh um uh, Whatever it's called, where you just you you they're joining Idaho. Oh yeah. Yeah. So uh, all the rural counties, they only add up to like seventy two hundred people because they all live on the outskirts of town doing all the farming and everything like that. Yeah. They just can't compete with uh, Portland, you know, and the, yeah. the, the 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 bigger cities. They just outvote them on everything, and then they just ignore them. They just go, well, we don't need you, and we don't need to pay attention to anything going on out there so they feel like well we'll just go join up with idaho oh really yeah and That's idaho's ta- idaho's willing to take them on it's going all the way up to federal and they're really? gonna, yeah and there's it's idaho's gonna look it's gonna have this big bump out into oregon where they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna take over all the rural counties of oregon oh my god yeah people are fucking sick of it man yeah like they, yeah yeah, the, yeah, yeah. that 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 crazy uh intense hard left like liberal ideology it's just yeah. burning everything to the ground man it's think, like it's good right. in theory yeah. but it doesn't seem to be working out for anybody no i think you're right yeah well you know what i concentrate on rock and roll i try try and keep my nose out of politics and all that stuff yeah you know i i no. i'm not really a a big political guy either i just I'm just it's it is interesting to see it all happening. It's such a it's yeah. such a uh uh tumultuous time. Is that the word I'm looking yeah, for? Yeah, that I sounds mean, about right. It's just fucking so it crazy. Is. Everybody's so polarized and and opinionated like they know what the fuck they're talking about and yeah. I don't think any of us really do. They're they're so contradictory that all these uh, governments yeah, you know, and it's uh, it's, it's it's rough trying to force people to take a shot that the FDA has impro- hasn't approved, and it's right. like causing all these problems with people, and then uh, they just want to brush all these all these complications as creating under the rug and act like it's not happening, and then force everybody to take a vaccine. Yeah, and it's like it's really uh, an untested. You know, you're basically just performing an experiment on the entire country, and it's like <laughs> if people want to volunteer for that experiment. That's great, you know, like, please, we need people to sign up and take the vaccine, see how it works, maybe fix it a little bit. But it's like, it's not a regular vaccine. It's messing with your RNA. It's messing with your genetic structure. And it's like, uh, not everybody's really into doing that. And I don't think forcing it on people is a good thing. No, I mean, yeah, I I agree. You know, apparently 100 years ago, that that, uh, whole pandemic they had back then. Yeah. The same thing happened. It seems like it's happening now. So what happened is they got a vaccine. uh, Maybe 100,000 people died, I think, initially. Uh, And then the same thing happened. They had a new strain and a million people died. It was just a a triple amount after. I think that's what we're going through now is the aftermath. Yeah, I Which mean, could be even worse than the original. That's usually how viruses work. You know, they evolve, they they mutate, and then it turns yeah. into a whole different problem. And uh, yeah, I, I I there's just so much uh, there's so much out there that the freaking vaccine's not doing anything. That it's uh, it's hard to believe it. That you you know, it's like it's giving people heart problems and all kinds Is of other it? conditions. And then yeah. then it's like not working at the same time. There's like like the the uh, Foo Fighters concert, right? Everybody yeah. had to be vaccinated, but the fucking Foo Fighters got COVID anyways. There was that cruise where everybody had to be vaccinated and have a <laughs> negative test. People still got COVID. Uh, you know, all those uh, 
Democrats who fled from Texas who were like forcing vaccines oh, yeah, on yeah, people. Yeah. Yeah. And a bunch of them got COVID even though they're all vaccinated. It's just, it's fucking rough, man. You know, yeah, it's like, yeah. I mean, doesn't it, it's not doing what it says it's going to do. And then it's giving people health issues on top of it. And then they want to force you to take it. That shit's crazy. The forcing you to take it's where it's it's like that's not cool, man. You're just you're forcing everybody to volunteer for a science experiment. I, I, it's true. And now they're talking about a third shot now. To, yeah, well, I mean, two's not enough, right? Let's yeah. just keep pumping keep it in. Pumping yeah. it in there. Keep giving it to him, you know. Yeah, my dad yeah. got it, and he fucking got sick. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He just you know it's it's yeah. It's it might work for some people, but it's not really it's not solving the problem. And that's no. that's why I think a lot no. of people. And of course, nobody trusts the freaking government, and it's not <laughs> FDA approved. And then, yeah, yeah. So um, I mean, obviously, people are suspicious as hell about just putting that in their body, man. Yeah. And like, what is it going to do to you? Yeah, I know it's crazy. It's, it's mental. No. But I've know? seen I've seen a lot of people talking about doing everything they can to um, prevent people from like existing without getting the vaccine. And just forcing everybody to become part of this mass science experiment, <laughs> yeah. you know, that, like without, without, uh, uh, against their will, as it were. Yeah, people have strong opinions about it. You know, I, I had a went to the hairdressers earlier, and this uh, this girl, she said that um, I, I said, oh, I, I don't even know why I asked her. I said, did you get did you get vaccinated? I said, oh, I'm not going to say. I, I can't say. I said, no, that's fine. That's cool. Because yeah. she said because I did tell people and i got such a bad reaction from different people people will call me up say i'm stupid and, then, and yeah it was like awful i'm saying yeah. well hey you don't i mean sorry I, I apologize to her i didn't mean to pry you know yeah but it's like she got such a bad reaction so it's sort of best to sort of keep it to yourself really you know what I mean? yeah i've had arguments with uh close friends of mine yeah. where i'm just like I mean, forcing people to take it's a human rights violation. Right. Uh, like everybody should. I mean, sure, take it if it if it, if it makes you feel better. Take it if it helps. Yeah. You know, but I mean, doesn't it hasn't proven to be helpful yet. And they're just like, you're a fucking piece of shit. I know. And it's just it's like yeah. I mean, why? Because I don't want to force a bunch of people to take an experimental drug. Like yeah. I think it's great that it's an option. People are getting pretty uptight about it, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's one thing if it actually worked. <laughs> you will. I suppose. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many how many different know. reports I see about it not doing what it's supposed to do. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, hopefully they come up with one that actually does what it's supposed to do. Well, they're still working on it. I mean, they, they got a new strain, so they're going to have to come up with something stronger anyway for the new strains. Yeah. It's just going to keep you know? uh, it's going to keep mutating, but I mean, honestly, I a lot of people who've gotten sick and survived the virus or whatever. I mean, it's, mm. uh, they're probably in pretty good shape. You know, I some of them, some of them, I, I know. It's better than having the vaccine, I think. I know that I've heard that there's a lot of uh, after effects as well. Yeah, damage. There's been some damage. But people have had it. They've, you know, their lungs are damaged or this damaged. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Oh yeah. I don't know what well, the your numbers. immune system eats your lung tissue all up. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know what the numbers are on that stuff, but you know. Yeah, it's a scary thing, man. You know, it yeah. really is. It is. But I don't know. It's uh, I don't have the answers, man. I just no, can talk about it. I don't have the have answers. An, have I mean, whatever my opinion. I wish is. we had someone. George Carlin isn't around to come up with any answers, and <laughs> you know, he he's the man. He's the yeah. guy. You know, that guy should have been president, as far as I'm concerned. That would have been nice, man. <laughs> you, know? you know? We can't have legitimate president in this we, fucking country. We, we miss him. We miss him, George Carlin. Yeah. You know, if anyone needed to be cloned, it was him, right? Yeah, he was a smart guy. He oh. definitely had it figured oh, out. Oh, he was man. amazing. So, yeah. yeah, it's a... Uh, favorite. Uh, it's like, uh, I don't know, the modern day would be someone like maybe Joe Rogan or something, yeah. you know, who's yeah, got yeah. his head on straight and... It looks at things from both both sides of the aisle as That's opposed true. to just having a straightforward yeah. opinion. Joe's you know? great. I love Joe as well. Oh, yeah. But yeah. it's like we don't get those options for our leaders, you know. We get these people <laughs> who are uh, supported by billionaires. and Don't get me started. Yeah. Don't get me started. This we is... could go down. We could go down a oh, hole. Oh, my God. You know, yeah. I listen to NPR. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a fucking trip, man, what the the world has become. Yeah. And the illusion of choice that we're given. I said to my mom and dad, I was on Skype with them. I said, you know what? You lived in a good time. You know, you're lucky that, you know, it's near the end of your, your days because of the tear. <laughs> you know, there's some scary shit happening in the future. Yeah. 
And uh, and at the same time, I mean, it's always been kind of chaotic when you look through history. I mean, the last hundred years of our history as a country mm. has been completely fucking insane. You know, I mean, uh, dealing with World War One into World War Two, yeah. and then into the Cold War, and then but, Vietnam, know, and but everything's been crazy. I mean, this country is a relatively new country yeah. you know, compared to like Europe and all that. But you know, some of the, if you go back to history, like you hear some of that stuff that uh, they used to do it's unbelievable you know it's like wow you yeah. know like the torture and the stuff they did back in, you know oh, yeah. you know so um, i always laugh when people say how how hard they have it when it, they yeah. have it better than anybody's ever yeah. had it ever Absolutely. in the history of humankind no doubt about it <laughs> and they're no. like yeah but i'm oppressed and it's like uh, yeah. no you're you're, <laughs> <laughs> I know. you're so fucking lucky to yeah. live where you live right now you should be thankful for it but uh yeah you know, everybody wants this perfect world. They want utopia. Right. And, and utopia is always a, a dystopia for everybody but you. That's uh, true. And shit just uh, cracks me up that people think that there's such a thing as a perfect world. For 8 billion people, it's going to be perfect. <laughs> yeah. No, it might, mm. you know. If, right. uh, if the things are going like 51% your way, you, <laughs> you're killing it right now. Yeah, no doubt. No and doubt. Like, it's uh yeah it's 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 fun to watch man i i i can't uh i can't lie i do like to watch some wild videos of people screaming into their phones like uh just complaining about their existence and talking about how special they are and how much they deserve and i'm like what has america done to <laughs> the population yeah. man you know like where the fuck do they get this sense of entitlement from i know it is it's so weird isn't it i don't i don't know but anyway, when this co podcast has come out, yeah. comes out, um, I'm going to know. Uh, I went for an audition a couple of days ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I, I suppose I could say who it is. Uh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, it, it, it'd be cause out. Because when is this podcast coming out? This podcast will be out uh, probably middle of August. So that I should know by then. Yeah. So anyway, I, I auditioned for uh, Jack Russell's Great White oh, yeah. a couple of days ago. Jack's doing well. He was sick for a while, um, and but he's doing really good. And uh, the band's rocking. It's a great band. Um, so anyway, I got to play with him a couple of days ago, and it was pretty cool. Um, we'll see what happens, you know, and see if they like me. I mean, you know, you just got to give them your best, right? And 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 they they can choose what they want to do. So by the time the podcast come out, I'm, I'm you know that might be a a thing. At, I'm pretty sure that's going to be a thing, man. Yeah. How how is Great White not going to take you on, man? You know, or Jack Russell's Great White. Well, I, I, that would be crazy to to I turn did, down what a legendary drummer of your stature. Well, I, I did a session with Rudy Sarzo last week in yeah. LA. You know, Rudy's a gentleman. He's awesome. And uh, I was talking to him about it. He said, oh, they shouldn't even audition. They should just give you the job. I'm like, really? Yeah, oh, that's nice should. of you, Rudy. That's, you know, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I'd have to agree with you Rudy know. on that one, man. But, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. You know, I gave him my groove. Yeah. Uh, that's my thing. It's my groove, you know. So we'll see. Uh, but it was fun. We, we had a good time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and Jack is going to look at the tapes and hear it and see what he thinks. Uh, you know? Jack's a good dude, man. I've yeah. worked with Jack before. He's oh, yeah? awesome. Yeah, he came through Vamped once or twice, and right. I liked him. He was a nice person. Yeah, and, I met him. Uh, I think in the whiskey. I think uh, a couple of years ago, I got an award over there, um, and he was there. He was pretty nice. Yeah, just cool. I know the bass player really well as well, Dan McNay, who uh, I met him through uh, Ronnie Montrose. We worked together with Ronnie, and uh, Dan has been my friend for years, and. Uh, since I met him, and uh, you know, him and Jack mess around a lot and have the same sense of humor. So, um, yeah, he, he's good people, I think. Oh, yeah, I think you guys are gonna work well so, together. Fingers man. crossed, you know, because it'd be nice. Because I, you know, I was doing the Vegas thing, but I'm sort of over the Vegas uh, gigs and stuff. I, I just want to yeah. get out there. They fly out every week and do stuff, festivals, and all that. Oh, that's fun, man. Which I love traveling. I love flying out. I love yeah. going to different cities, you know. Uh, but fly dates are so much better than hopping in a van or getting oh, yeah. a bus. Yeah, well, people do that now. I mean, I spoke to Rudy about it last week, and he said for eight years now, he's been they've been doing fly outs the weekends. They just don't go out for weeks on end now. You know, it's so much better. Yeah. You've got a family at home. You don't want to be away from them for weeks and weeks, you know. So, you know, I think that's the that's the way to do it these days. 
you know that's the if you can do it that way man, i think he's with the, the guess who it. he's with the guess who oh is he yeah Ru- rudy is i didn't know that yeah he's been playing with them for like eight years now oh man what a killer gig yeah why not i get confused with the, with the guess who and the who uh, no no who's the other one who's that other lot? american woman or something <laughs> yeah there's this oh, i'm thinking of another band uh bruce kulik plays with um, oh, yeah. there's a guess who and then there's that other ba- Canadian band I'm an American one does I'm an American band and one does American Woman American Woman I thought the guess who did American Woman they probably do so then and the then other lot is it Bruce's band probably does uh, Grand Funk Railroad yeah I get them confused they're sort of the same vibe oh okay yeah you know? no yeah Bruce Kulik's awesome too oh man. he's amazing yeah he's, I saw him I, I played here I went to see him he's so good yeah, he was always coming through on Kiss Night and doing stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. It was sad about his brother passing. Oh, yeah, Bob. Yeah, that was that was sad. Yeah, that was a few years ago, wasn't it? No, it wasn't that long ago. No? No, it was literally six months ago. Oh, really? I think so, yeah. Oh, man. He, he called me like a month before he, he passed uh, about a project as well uh, with Lemmy's son. Oh, yeah, I guess it happened right when the pandemic, May 28th, 2020. Yeah. Wow. I know, isn't it crazy? Yeah, for some reason I thought that was a couple years back. No, no. I mean, they're dropping like flies. Yeah. So many musicians, I don't don't understand. I think uh, I saw, I don't know if this is true or not, I haven't looked it up. Let me look it up real quick before I say it. ZZ Top's bass player? No, Dusty. He died today. He died today. Yeah, he, oh last God. night. Yeah. That's terrible. I know, huh? And then, oh, yeah, and then the drummer from uh, Slipknot. That's what I was looking that up re- right now, yeah. Joey Jorgensen. Yeah, he passed away, too. Fuck, that was real, huh? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, that's terrible, man. I know. Yeah, he had a sickness, apparently. He had uh, something, a physical fi- a sickness that he had that he couldn't play. You know, that's why he left Slipknot originally. Wow. He was amazing. What an incredible drummer. Yeah, he was one of the best, man. Like, God, that dude played stuff that I... <sighs> Mind-boggling. Like, how is that even physically possible My, for a human to do with four limbs? I mean, I don't understand it. You know, I'm, I'm an old-school drummer. You know, a, a groove is my thing. Yeah. But, you know, I feel like I feel like going to get lessons doing, you know, rudiments or, or drum line. Because you hear these drummers on Instagram and Facebook, and it's, oh, my God, what the hell? Oh, yeah. How can they play so fast? <laughs> it, dri- it drives me crazy. I'm like, how can I get that speed? Yeah, they just practice that same rhythm over and over and over again. I, I suppose. But I, I actually first talked to my girlfriend about it. I think I, I might try and join a, a drumline thing or something. Just to really get my, you know, that. That'd be cool. Wouldn't it be cool? Huh? Yeah. Just to just to get the speed. Yeah. You know what I mean? They'd be tripping. I mean, Saying it's not my thing, really. A drum line, it's not my thing, but it's a ch- again, it's a challenge, you know. Why not? Yeah. I mean, you know, um, I mean, I teach. I'm teaching kid. I'm a few kids. Um, but I don't know how. <laughs> but you know, again, I think it's because you got to put time in. That's it, though. You know, you know you've got to get it going on muscle memory till you're not thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, they they had an interview with the drummer from Slayer, uh, oh, yeah. and they asked him about, oh, you you you've been playing for so many years, practicing. He said, it's not the years, it's the hours. <laughs> That's what he said, and it's true. Yeah, the, it really is. Uh, Paul Bostoff or Dave Lombardo, whichever Lombardo. one you're talking about, Lombardo. Lombardo yeah. yeah, those guys are fucking incredible man and the speed and the and just like the but power you see stuff on, on instagram these you know girls like just doing crazy shit oh, yeah. kids doing like what the hell or like i don't know if you're familiar with cannibal <laughs> corpse but uh paul markowitz from oh, yeah? cannibal corpse yeah that's just freaking blast beats just <laughs> brrr, fucking yeah, i don't first, get it they'll play for 90 minutes of just fucking oh, gunning it i don't get it and i, I don't understand how they can survive that it's I, I crazy don't, to I, me. Don't, I don't know it, yeah. It's really bizarre. Just it, in, endurance. I suppose it is endurance challenge, man. Yeah, 
But yeah, it's a shame losing people like Joey, man. That was uh for me, that was one of the guys growing yeah. up. That was just a yeah. slipknot was a big deal for me growing up. Oh man. yeah. Got to see him live a few times and it was uh Corey incredible. Taylor's pretty amazing. I mean the oh, guy yeah. is really interesting. Uh, I mean he lives here in Vegas and I just hear stories about him just uh just so talented, so motivated. I mean he's even written a book. He's yeah, like a book about politics or something. Oh really? Apparently, yeah. I mean the guy is like just the tenacity, you know, it's unbelievable. Yeah, he uh, took a bunch of time off and started taking vocal lessons. He's like already a famous singer and, and doing all this stuff for Slipknot. And he was just like, I'm going to stop for a few years yeah. and take these vocal lessons right. and pick my game up even more. I know. It's an impressive dude. I don't think, yes, I'm saying, very impressive guy. And I, I just think, you know, you never stop learning, you know. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking of just getting some lessons from a, like, a rudiment guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what, like, even Randy Rhodes would do that. He'd be on tour with Ozzy, and he'd stop in every town, and he'd take a guitar lesson that's right. in every town. Yeah, that crazy? Yeah, I mean, he was one of the best. I yeah. guess that's how, one of the ways you get there. You know? Yeah, and Absorbing it's like... Absorbing it from all different directions. What is it? Uh, Steve Stevens, he did a flamenco. He did a, a, a whole degree or whatever it is, a, a, a flamenco uh, lessons, and... He ended up doing a flamenco album. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I did not know that. Steve yeah. Stevenson did a flamenco album? Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Uh, and he's f so talented. I mean, he's amazing, you know. But uh, I think, you know, just doing different types of music can really help you. Yeah. Uh, you know, find your, your individual style, you know? Looks like Corey, yeah, dude, exactly. It looks like Corey did uh, three books. Oh, r really? Yeah, man, my internet's running slow on here right now. Let me push this one. It's almost loaded. It's like the 90s internet. It's going bloop, 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 bloop. Oh, really? There it is. Yeah, you wrote three books. Seven Deadly Sins, Funny Thing Happened on the Way to Heaven, hmm. and You're Making Me Hate You. What are they? They're fictional? Or? Uh, yeah, they're... Oh, wow. Oh, uh, looks like paperback books. Damn. Um, wow. They're all... Sunday Times bestsellers I, too. I got to read. Is it what is it? Is it fictional? Uh, I don't know. No fiction. I don't know. I gotta check one of those out. Um. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. He wrote three different books. Wow. Guy's getting it done, man. So this oh, is a fucking society up. That's so did I get the interview? Did I get the job? You got the. Yeah. This is an interview for a job, right? Is it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, uh, it it's an internship, actually. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You, know, you start tomorrow. All right. And oh, nice. you got to bring you. your own cleaning supplies. Okay, I will, and my own mask. All <laughs> uh, right. Well, yeah. I mean, so let's uh, let's wrap it up. We've been doing it for an hour and thirteen already, yeah. man. Yeah, or wow. whatever it's going to end up being when I edit it together. But yeah, it's been a fantastic time hanging out with you, yeah, brother. You too, I really man. appreciate you coming on the show. Big episode fifty. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. I I really appreciate you having me on. Yeah, dude, it's it's an honor to have you on, yeah. man. You're it's it's a it's, I'm just stoked that you're a friend of mine, man. It's just uh, such a privilege to get to hang out with you. And, I didn't uh, have my dog this time. My last interview I did, I had my dog on my lap. Oh, it was, it you was should cool. have brought. Yeah, I would have I loved to have had you bring the dog. I should have brought him, but you know, it was uh, the last interview I did. I I got a lot of uh, feedback. I never got feedback from an interview before, and suddenly this interview I did. Uh, who was it now? I can't remember the guy. Uh, oh, uh, he um, he does a lot of interviews with uh, athletes and all types of people. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he came to my studio for about an hour, and I had the dog on my lap and was just chilling out. And uh, and then after it, when he released it. I got so much stuff, so many people. Oh, really? Say it was a great, a wonderful interview. I don't remember it. So you never <laughs> remember interviews. You never remember what you say. I have yeah. no idea. Well, I've got to watch it on YouTube now to see what I said. Oh. You know, it's funny. Yeah, man. I mean, it just goes by so fast. And yeah. when you're just trying to hold a conversation for an hour, it's such a weird space to be in. Like, you it know, is. the cameras are there, but right. I'm really, I'm trying to just talk to you and have a good time. I, know, but I don't want dead space. And it's like, sure. it's a weird headspace to be in. So it's a lot of stuff is. comes out and you don't remember it. Yeah. Yeah. No I, doubt. I, I'm getting better at the process, man. You know, I've done 
50 of these things now it's uh yeah i'm not so terrible the first few episodes were just insanely bad i i, I was just stumbling i don't know what i was doing well, that's okay yeah it's a learning process right it takes a second man who's your biggest person you had on it you are oh really yeah well, i'm privileged I, to yeah I, awesome. I uh i wanted to bring on a, a big big time celebrity for my 50th episode and well, i'm really awesome. fucking privileged to have uh such an amazing well, talent as yourself on I'm the glad, podcast i'm glad to be on it i am i'm very privileged privilege just awesome thank you so much you know, man. man it's it's so cool of you dude uh and hopefully when you're done uh with your custard pie album and yeah. your daughter's got your thing coming out i, I will let you know you start Absolutely. touring with uh yeah. jack russell and great white because obviously you're going to get that they're fucking crazy <laughs> if they don't hire you and uh you know you have to come back on and tell me some stories from the road oh, and definitely uh promote Absolutely. the new album and everything maybe bring your daughter on she we can yeah we can, we can play the, you know, the new song and promote your daughter great. that'd be awesome actually yeah. i'd love to do that and she'd love to do that that'd be cool man yeah, maybe that. she can perform i'm trying to get more uh, musical mm. guests on so maybe if she wants to come and jam and put the cameras up and record or something right. like that uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, I, I'm all or welcome kind of thing, and I'm always interested in doing new stuff here. That sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So I'll do a little outro here and just go, uh, thanks for watching uh, To the Fullest with Jason Froberg, man. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Give us a like. Ring the bell. Check out our social media. And, uh, what bell? Is there a bell somewhere? There's a bell. It's, it's <laughs> right down there, and you ring it, and then it gives you notifications of whenever I put out another podcast yeah, or awesome. any of the other things that I'm doing on Space Brain Station. So, yeah. Well, oh. thank you again. I appreciate it. You're the man, Les. Awesome. You too. Peace. Thanks for watching To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts here and subscribe by clicking right here. We air new podcasts every Monday morning on Space Brain Station and all of your favorite podcast apps.